Yesterday, in the church calendar, if you came to Mass, we, would, uh, we, we celebrated the feast day of St. Peter Chrysologus. He's uh, a bishop and doctor of the church, one of the very early uh, church uh, fathers. He was born around the year 380 AD, just a little bit before when I was born, in a sort of northern territory of Italy, around Emilia. And he was chosen about 424, 425, something like that, to be uh, Bishop of Ravenna. So we're in that sort of region. And what's rather interesting about him is his name, Peter Chrysologus. And Chrysologus isn't his surname, as we would understand somebody's surname, like Stanton or Jones or Davis. Chrysologus is, in fact, the nickname which was attributed to him. And as you know, we don't get the privilege of choosing our nicknames, do we? Unfortunately, they seem to get chosen for us. And Chrysologus means golden-mouthed. And so that tells us something about the character of who Peter Chrysologus was. It tells us something about his vocation and his mission as an individual, as a priest, and then, of course, as a bishop ministering to the people of Ravenna. And indeed, he was a very good and extremely caring pastor to the people who were entrusted to his care. And he converted many through his eloquent preaching and his vast writings uh, that he did. He taught the faithful, he taught the people of God that the incarnation of Jesus, that the Word became flesh, was something of a game changer, was something that changed and transformed everything. It was a moment set in time, but the implications of such reaches even to today in the 21st century, let alone in the first century. And so if it's true, if the incarnation of Jesus was such a game changer, the question then becomes for us, as indeed it was for St. Peter Chrysologus and the faithful, is how does this help us on our journeys of faith? How does it help us move us from our base selves, our sinful selves, the sort of worldly self, if you like, to ourselves being conformed to the image and likeness of God? And that was St. Peter Chrysologus's uh, whole mission and purpose. Listen to what he says to the people of Ravenna in one of his sermons. He says this, Man, why do you have a low opinion of yourself when you are so precious to God? Why do you so dishonor yourself when you are so honored by God? Why do you inquire about where you are made and not ask why you are made? I think you'd agree that there's some big questions there to, for us all to begin to unpack. And that little snippet from his sermons tells us a lot about his concern for the people, that his concern was for their ultimate flourishing. Their focus was to be able to help them, to move them along so that they can become truly alive. And just like us, become the people of God that God has created us to be. And to, be, to do that, to be the people God created us to be, is of course a fruit of that incarnation moment, that moment set in time that has its implications here. And so that low opinion of ourselves that he mentions in that, uh, in that little part of the sermon 
can be seen as our ability to recognize the graces and gifts of Almighty God that he's bestowed upon us. Perhaps not to recognize them, to throw them back at him, perhaps, each time we compare ourselves to others, each time we look longingly at others, wishing that we could have those gifts and talents, rather than thanking God for our own and looking to grow and develop our own gifts. The dishonor that he mentions in that little excerpt reflects our own sinfulnesses, reflects those vices which seem to creep in quite often when we're at our most fragile and most vulnerable. It's like the devil knows the little kinks in our armor, doesn't he? And ultimately, these vices, our sinfulnesses, get in the way and get affect our, that intimacy with the Lord. And we can hear that play out, can't we, in the gospel that we've just heard, in the interaction between that unnamed man at the start of the gospel and Jesus, and the advice that Jesus gives the man at the beginning of that gospel. Jesus, of course, speaking of the, the vice of avarice, of greed. Uh, but he could be speaking about any of those vices. And he issues this warning to him. Watch and be on your guard. And so we can see that, that, the, uh, that Jesus' uh, instruction for us to watch, to be careful, reflects the seriousness that these vices have and the hooks that they have in our lives. And so that's why, of course, we, all, we also call them those deadly sins, those seven deadly sins. To ignore them and pretend that they are not there or not real can be quite detrimental to our spiritual journey. To be courageously committed then is to acknowledge and to believe that we are precious to God, that we are honored by God, as St. Peter Chrysologus reflects in that little sermon. That the things that hold us back, those struggles of ours, the sinfulnesses, those vices and weaknesses, those things are not the character traits of ours by which we, are, we ultimately define ourselves. We are precious in the eyes of the God, in the eyes of God, not despite all of these vulnerabilities, but rather because of them. We are courageous when we begin to and engage in that spiritual training ground with which we seek to remove ourselves from those things which impede our flourishing, which get in the way of us realizing that reality that we are precious to God from those bad choices, those, those poor relationships. And these things have the opportunity to become our greater strength, as St. Paul says in his letters, because through them we are able to walk with others, help with others on their journey of faith. And that's when we become truly alive, isn't it? When we're able to share that the gifts that we have, and that's what the parable reveals, those gifts that we have are not for ourselves to be held in. And not just the, the positive gifts and talents, but even giving away those uh, things that we struggle with. Because in sharing our testimony with others, we show that uh, there is that journey of faith, that there is a progress that can be made, and that the poor people who are also struggling are not on their own. So let us seek St. Peter Chrysologus's uh, intercession and his protection uh, during uh, this weekend. Let us look at ourselves uh, in a moment of silence and, and tell ourselves that we are precious in God's eyes, that we are honored in God's eyes, and that God has gifts and talents that he's given to us. And let us thank God for those gifts and those talents. Amen. <clears throat>